Whether it was your wedding or one you attended, what is the most inappropriate behavior you have seen from a wedding guest? Story 1. I've told this story before, but it never gets old because it still pisses me off every time I think about it. I was a bridesmaid for my college BFF's wedding, and what should have been a beautiful day was marred by the groom's ultra-conservative, newly devout Catholic parents. The groom's parents had always been Catholic, but a few years before the wedding, they got super serious about their faith. This included having a real wedding in a Catholic church after 25 years of marriage, since their original ceremony had been at City Hall. Initially, they were thrilled about their son's engagement. However, their enthusiasm quickly waned when the bride and groom announced their wedding would take place at a campground, not in a Catholic church. The parents put immense pressure on the couple to change the venue. Despite the relentless pushback, the bride and groom stood firm in their decision. This defiance didn't sit well with the groom's father who ultimately declared he wouldn't attend the wedding and forbade the groom's younger brother from being the ring bearer. The groom's mother, however, said she would attend, even if she didn't agree with the venue. When we arrived at the campground, all the arrangements included the groom's mother. We had planned who would walk her to her seat and where she would sit at the reception. There was no cell reception at the campground, and the only phone line was at the camp office. About an hour before the ceremony, the phone started ringing incessantly until one of the groomsmen finally picked up. The call was from the groom's father. Put the groom on the phone, he demanded. The groom answered, and his father delivered the crushing news. Your mother will not be attending your wedding because this is an abomination. And then he hung up. I was with the bride when she found out. The color drained from her face and she broke down in tears. Angry, rage-filled tears. She was heartbroken and it was utterly devastating to watch. She cried her heart out until about 10 minutes before the wedding was supposed to start. Despite the emotional turmoil, the bride pulled herself together. With a brave face, she walked down the aisle and managed to smile through the ceremony. The groom was visibly upset, but he too soldiered on. The absence of the groom's mother loomed large, a silent, painful void that everyone felt. The wedding itself was lovely despite the earlier drama. Friends and family rallied around the couple, offering their love and support. The reception was filled with laughter, dancing, and heartfelt toasts. However, the shadow of the groom's parents' disapproval was hard to ignore. In the end, the couple's resilience shone through. They didn't let the negativity of the groom's parents overshadow their special day. They focused on the love they had for each other and the support from those who were truly there for them. The experience was a stark reminder of how strong they were together and how they could face any challenge as a united front. Story 2 Weddings are notorious for creating unforgettable memories, but sometimes those memories are made for all the wrong reasons. This is a tale about my friend Dave and his girlfriend Sally, who managed to turn a wedding into a chaotic spectacle that left everyone talking for years. Dave was a close friend of the groom, though not part of the wedding party. The ceremony was beautiful, everything going smoothly until one of the readings. Suddenly, Dave stood up, muttering curses under his breath, and dashed out of the church. Everyone was confused. But with the ceremony in progress, most people chose to ignore the outburst and focus on the couple's special moment. It wasn't until almost two weeks later that we heard from Dave again. His sudden disappearance had left us all baffled, but the truth was even more astounding than we could have imagined. During the wedding ceremony, Dave had been casually scrolling through his Facebook feed. In doing so, he stumbled upon a post that reminded him of something crucial. His ex-girlfriend's best friend's wedding was happening on the same day. This was the wedding Dave had planned to crash to win back his ex who had left him a year earlier for a job overseas. Panic-stricken, Dave abandoned the first wedding and somehow managed to book a last-minute flight. He arrived just in time for the reception at the second wedding. Against all odds, things went well for him. He reconnected with his ex, and they ended up joining the newlyweds on their honeymoon, which was a big camping trip with a group of close friends. Despite the unexpected reunion and spending a week together, Dave and his ex did not rekindle their romance. But here's where the story takes another wild turn. Dave had left his date, Sally, at the first wedding. Sally was only 22 and they had just started dating. Left to her own devices, she decided to make the most of the night. Sally got very drunk and took way too much MDMA. In her altered state, she decided to flash the DJ to get the microphone, using her ample bosom as leverage. She then proceeded to proposition the newlyweds for a threesome shortly after their first dance. The newlyweds, trying to maintain some semblance of decorum, politely declined. Sally, undeterred by the rejection, eventually vomited from the mix of alcohol and drugs. Despite this disastrous night, Sally and Dave somehow made it through. They managed to stick together and, surprisingly, have been together for almost two years now. The moral of this story is, at best, murky. On one hand, it serves as a cautionary tale about the perils of leaving your date alone at a wedding. 
especially if your plan involves chasing an ex. On the other hand, it's a bizarre testament to the unpredictability of relationships and how sometimes even the most chaotic beginnings can lead to lasting partnerships. Story 3. Sometimes the most memorable moments at weddings come from the unplanned and unexpected especially when kids are involved. This is one such story where the star of the show was a very young ring bearer, me. I was about three or four years old, and I was given the important role of ring bearer at my favorite aunt's wedding. I don't remember much from that age, but this particular incident has been recounted to me so many times that it feels like I remember every detail. The day was bright and full of excitement. My aunt looked like a princess, and the venue was bustling with family and friends. I was dressed in a little tuxedo, carrying a small pillow with the wedding rings carefully tied to it. I walked up the aisle, feeling very proud of my important task. Everyone was smiling at me, and I felt like a little hero. After I handed over the rings, the ceremony began. As a kid, my concept of time was non-existent, and to me, the ceremony felt like it was going on forever. I stood there, shifting from foot to foot, trying my best to be patient. But patience isn't a strong suit for toddlers. Soon enough, I got tired of standing. In my little world, it seemed perfectly reasonable to find a more comfortable position. So, without much thought, I put the pillow down on the floor, laid down on it, and decided to take a nap right there in the middle of the ceremony. From what I've been told, this unexpected move caused a mix of reactions among the guests. Some were trying to stifle their laugh, while others were snapping pictures of the adorable ring bearer who couldn't wait to rest his weary head. My aunt and uncle, while trying to keep their composure, couldn't help but smile at the sight of me curled up on the pillow, fast asleep. The ceremony continued around me, with the efficient carrying on as though nothing unusual was happening. Meanwhile, I slept soundly, oblivious to the laughter and whispers I was causing. I remained peacefully napping until the ceremony was over, and someone gently picked me up and carried me to the reception area. Years later, this story has become a beloved family legend. Whenever weddings come up in conversation, Someone invariably brings up the time I decided to nap in the middle of my aunt's wedding. My aunt, now happily married for many years, still laughs about it and often mentions how it's one of her favorite memories from that day. Looking back, it's funny to think about how what seemed like the worst behavior at the time turned into one of the most cherished and entertaining moments. It's a reminder that weddings, despite all the planning and precision, are still very much about the unexpected moments that bring joy and laughter. Story 4. Weddings are meant to be joyous celebrations but sometimes they can highlight the less than pleasant aspects of family dynamics. My own wedding was a prime example of how one person's behavior can cast a shadow over an otherwise beautiful day. From the start, I had made the difficult decision not to invite my parents to the wedding. My father, bless his heart, has never quite managed to behave like a normally socialized human being. For 70 years, he's been a source of unpredictable and often inappropriate behavior, and I just didn't want that on my wedding day. My mom, whom I wanted to be there, couldn't come without him. It was a tough call, but one I felt was necessary for the sake of peace. Our wedding was a destination affair, a small, intimate gathering at a beautiful location. Just when we thought everything was set, my parents invited themselves at the last minute. Fortunately, the hotel was full, and they couldn't stay at the same place as the rest of us, which gave me some initial relief. On the day of the wedding, my father-in-law, F.E.L., who was supposed to walk me down the aisle, backed out at the last moment. He didn't want to step on my dad's toes, given the sensitive situation. So, I walked down the aisle alone, a mixture of emotions swirling inside. It wasn't how I had envisioned it, but I was determined to make the best of it. The ceremony was beautiful, but the reception was where things started to go downhill. We had chosen a nice restaurant for our small dinner reception, hoping for an elegant and intimate celebration. Instead, my dad decided to take center stage. From the moment we sat down, he dominated the conversation, talking about himself in his loud, booming voice. He made inappropriate jokes, behaved childishly, and generally acted like the obnoxious person I had feared he would be. My mom tried to shush him, but he paid her no mind. He ignored me completely, focusing instead on making the reception his own personal dinner theater. The discomfort among our guests was palpable. Those seated near him were visibly uneasy, and I found myself constantly apologizing for his behavior. We had deliberately avoided having toast to prevent him from taking the floor entirely, but his constant loud interjections were almost worse. I couldn't leave our own reception fast enough. As soon as it was polite to do so, my new spouse and I made our exit, trying to salvage the remainder of our evening. But even after the reception, my dad wasn't done. He harassed everyone for their email addresses, insisting on adding them to his list so he could send out his political, uneducated, and opinionated daily spam. Despite all this, there were moments of genuine joy that day. My spouse and I shared our love with close friends and family, who were truly there for us. We danced, we laughed, 
and we made promises that would shape our future together. But my dad's behavior is a lingering memory, a dark cloud over an otherwise bright and beautiful day. It's a story I often tell with a mix of frustration and resignation. My dad, in true form, managed to make my wedding about himself, much to everyone's discomfort. It was a harsh reminder of why I had hesitated to include him in the first place. Story 5. Weddings are often memorable for their heartfelt moments and joyous celebrations, but sometimes they become unforgettable for entirely different reasons. My sister's wedding was a perfect example of this, thanks to the antics of our youngest brother. The day started off beautifully. The venue was stunning, the ceremony went smoothly, and everyone was in high spirits. The reception featured an open bar, which was a big hit among the guests. My youngest brother, who was 18 at the time, decided to take full advantage of it. Despite not being of legal drinking age, no one seemed overly concerned. The venue owner had only one rule. Drinks had to stay inside. Predictably, my brother didn't follow this rule. He wandered outside with his drinks multiple times ignoring the venue owner's polite warning. It didn't take long for him to get absolutely trashed in the parking lot. The venue owner, losing patience, finally threatened to call the cops if my brother didn't shape up. My brother, rather than heed the warning, decided that if he couldn't keep drinking, he'd just switch substances. He invited his friend, a known candy dealer, to the reception. As the evening wore on, it became clear that their behavior was spiraling out of control. The venue owner, true to his word, eventually called the cops. In a panic, my brother and his dealer friend decided it was time to make a hasty exit, but they didn't leave empty-handed. They made a beeline for the buffet table, grabbing as much food as they could carry. Plates piled high, they fled the scene, leaving a trail of chaos in their wake. The rest of the guests, initially shocked by the turn of events, eventually found some humor in the absurdity. Conversations buzzed with disbelief and laughter as people tried to process what had just happened. My sister, the bride, managed to stay composed and even found some humor in her little brother's wild escapade. Despite the disruption, the reception carried on. The music played, people danced, and the atmosphere gradually returned to one of celebration. The story of my brother's antics became a running joke for the rest of the night, adding an unexpected twist to the wedding that no one would forget. In the aftermath, the tale of my brother's drunken and drug-fueled adventure at my sister's wedding became legendary in our family. It's a story we recount at gatherings, often with a mix of exasperation and amusement. My brother, now older and somewhat wiser, cringes at the memory but takes it in stride, knowing he provided an unforgettable subplot to the day. Looking back, my sister's wedding was a perfect blend of chaos and celebration. It reminded us that no matter how meticulously you plan an event, the unpredictability of human behavior can turn it into something entirely unexpected. And while my brother's actions were far from ideal, they certainly ensured that my sister's wedding would be talked about for years to come. Story 6. Weddings are full of moments that become lifelong memories, but sometimes the most unforgettable stories come from unexpected mishaps. One of the most memorable weddings I attended involved a well-intentioned but hilariously misguided DJ choice that turned the reception into a mix of fun and frustration. My friend's wife, aiming to cut costs, hired a family member to DJ their wedding. This family member fancied himself the next Garth Brooks and saw the wedding as his big break. The crowd, however, wasn't particularly into country music which set the stage for an amusing and awkward night. The evening started off well enough. The DJ played a few popular hits, getting everyone out on the dance floor. Spirits were high, and it seemed like the reception was off to a great start. But then, the DJ decided it was time to showcase his talents. He stopped the music, picked up his acoustic guitar, donned a cowboy hat, and launched into one of his original country songs. The dance floor cleared almost instantly. Once he finished his song, he'd go back to playing some crowd-pleasing hits, and people would return to the dance floor ready to party again. But just as everyone was getting into the groove, he'd stop the music and perform another one of his country ballads. This cycle repeated all night. A few dance hits followed by a self-indulgent country song that would empty the dance floor. The bride and groom were clearly frustrated but felt helpless. Since the DJ was a family member and had agreed to work for free, they didn't have much leverage to make him stop. There was no contract, and they didn't want to cause a scene or hurt his feelings. To add to the cringe factor, the DJ also serenaded his girlfriend throughout the night. At one point, he even pulled her onto the dance floor for a personal performance, strumming his guitar and singing while everyone else watched, unsure whether to laugh or cringe. And just to paint the full picture, this wasn't happening in some country-loving region like Texas. This wedding was in Canada, where the country music fandom wasn't exactly strong among the guests. The juxtaposition of his cowboy persona in a Canadian setting made the whole situation even more surreal. Despite the DJ's antics, we all tried to make the best of the night. Between his performances, we danced and enjoyed ourselves, 
sharing knowing looks and laughs about the bizarre situation. The bride and groom, though exasperated, managed to keep smiling and even found humor in the situation later on. Story 7. I'll never forget that garden ceremony. We had this minister, and let me tell you, the guy was a piece of work. He decided that a wedding was the perfect time to deliver a sermon on marriage. Now, I'm not against a few words of wisdom, but this guy went full throttle on how women should submit to their husband. It was cringeworthy. I was in charge of the music, tucked away at the back, trying to keep my cool. It took everything in me not to chuck a speaker at him. Seriously, the urge was strong. Then, as if the sexist spiel wasn't enough, he completely lost the plot. There were the bride and groom, standing there patiently, and this guy decides it's altar call time. Yep, right in the middle of their wedding. He started inviting people to come up and accept Jesus into their lives. I mean, read the room, buddy! The only person who took him up on his offer was the lady who owned the venue. But she wasn't looking for salvation. She was looking for an end to this nonsense. She marched up the aisle, and even though she was whispering, everyone could hear her fury. No altar call! Finish the ceremony! No more sermons! You had to see the minister's face. He went from righteous zealot to a sulking teenager in seconds. He wrapped up the ceremony in the most lackluster monotone, signed the marriage license with a huff, and stormed off like a child denied can. The bride and groom, bless their hearts, took it in stride. They laughed it off, probably just relieved it was over. The guests were buzzing about it for weeks. It's not every day you see a minister get publicly chastised and then sulk through the rest of his duties. Story 8. It was supposed to be a small, intimate wedding. Fewer than 20 guests, just close friends and family. The kind of gathering where everyone knows everyone and things are supposed to be relaxed and personal. But the groom's sister, who is 37 years old, seemed determined to make it all about her. It was a display of entitlement and envy that I'd never seen before. The wedding started smoothly enough. We were at a beautiful park in the afternoon, planning to take some photos before heading to the reception. But right from the get-go, the groom's sister started complaining. She was peeved that the wedding wasn't catered and that we weren't heading straight to the reception to eat. I mean, photos take time, and it was an outdoor wedding. Of course, we were going to take photos. While we were snapping pictures, she decided to swoon dramatically on a park bench. It was pure theatrics, and her family rushed to fawn over her, missing out on most of the photos. This little stunt lasted at least 20 minutes. If she was truly in distress, we were just a five-minute walk from plenty of food options. But no, she chose to stay put, making a scene. And then she somehow twisted it into being the bride and groom's fault that she hadn't eaten breakfast or lunch. Literal blame was thrown around. No one told her not to eat, and she knew the wedding wasn't catered and what time dinner was. Yet, she acted like she'd been set up. Dinner time rolled around, and things didn't get any better. She took food right off the groom's plate without asking because she regretted her own meal choice. And when the bride and groom got special desserts, sent by the chef as a kind gesture, she stole half of her brother's treat and then had the nerve to whine to the bride for some of hers, too. When that didn't work, she complained to their parents about the unfairness of it all. Throughout the entire event, her transparent entitlement and constant need for attention were on full display. With so few people at the wedding, her behavior was impossible to ignore. She overshadowed every moment with her incessant complaining and theatrics, sucking up all the attention. Story 9. At a friend's wedding, Things took an unexpected turn thanks to some of the groom's relatives. One of his family members was apparently quite miffed that her daughter hadn't been asked to be a bridesmaid. Most people would just grumble about it, but not this lady. Nope. She decided to take matters into her own hands. She dressed her daughter in a full-on bridesmaid dress anyway. There was the bridal party, looking beautiful and coordinated. And then there was this girl, sticking out like a sore thumb in her uninvited bridesmaid attire. The bride and groom handled it with impressive poise, but you could see the tension simmering beneath the surface. It was a glaring act of defiance, and everyone noticed. But that wasn't even the peak of the drama. On the same side of the family, another female guest made a grand entrance that no one would forget. She waltzed into the church wearing a hot pink mesh dress. And when I say mesh, I mean practically see-through. The dress barely covered her behind, leaving little to the imagination. Her underwear was on full display, and jaws dropped as she sashayed down the aisle. The atmosphere in the church shifted instantly. Whispers spread like wildfire and heads turned, some in shock, others in barely concealed amusement. It was like something out of a reality TV show. The bride's side of the family looked horrified, while some of the groom's relatives seemed unfazed, maybe even proud. Throughout the ceremony, the hot pink dress was the elephant. It was hard to focus on the vows with such a distraction in the pews. Every time the congregation stood up or sat down, there it was, a neon beacon of poor taste. At the reception, Things got even more interesting. The unofficial bridesmaid roamed around, posing for photos as if she belonged. 
while the woman in the pink dress became the center of attention for all the wrong reasons. People couldn't stop talking about her outfit or lack thereof. The bride, to her credit, laughed it off as best she could, though you could tell she was seething inside. By the end of the night, the wedding had become the stuff of legends. Guests would talk about the hot pink dress and the rogue bridesmaid for years to come. It's funny how one or two people can turn a beautiful day into a circus. Story 10. This is a bit of a long one, but it really sets the stage. My best friend and I, both female, grew up with this guy, Pete. We all graduated together, and life seemed pretty straightforward. Pete went off to college out of state and met a girl named Tracy. They fell in love, got engaged, and eventually moved back. Tracy found a job related to her degree, and a month later, Pete got a job offer too, but it was on the complete opposite side of the state. They decided to do the long-distance thing for a year, with Tracy staying in their apartment and Pete moving for the job. Tracy needed a roommate, so Pete found Morgan, a girl from our high school who was moving back to town and looking for a place. We weren't friends with Morgan, but she seemed reliable enough, so we vouched for her. That's when things started to get weird. Morgan immediately took control of the wedding planning. Tracy, being low-maintenance and a bit of a tomboy, was relieved at first. She didn't know much about weddings and didn't have many people here to help since she was from the other side of the country. But within a week, Morgan decided she would be the maid of honor. Tracy wasn't comfortable with that and told Morgan she didn't know her well enough for such a role. So Morgan stepped down to bridesmaid. Not stopping there, Morgan Facebook stalked Tracy to find her middle school best friend and told her she was the maid of honor. She also invited Tracy's controlling, estranged mother into the wedding planning. When my friend and I tried to talk to Tracy and Pete about this, Pete just shrugged it off, saying the wedding was Tracy's thing. Tracy was overwhelmed and didn't know how to handle it. Morgan eventually convinced Tracy that having my friend and me in the wedding party wasn't traditional since there wouldn't be enough groomsmen. Tracy, feeling guilty because Morgan and the others had put so much effort into the planning, reluctantly agreed. The day of the wedding arrived, and things were a mess. Tracy's mother and out-of-state best friend did the seating chart and my friend and I ended up at a random table with some throwaway uncles and cousins. It was awkward. Thankfully, the cousins were kind enough to swap seats with us so we could sit with our friends. Then, drama ensued. The groom's mother broke down in tears because Tracy's mother had refused to let her be part of the wedding, calling her all sorts of names. The out-of-state best friend tried to exclude everyone who wasn't part of the bridal party from photos with the bride. It was a mess. During the bouquet toss, I caught it. Morgan, in a fit of rage, shoved me, screamed, and tried to rip the bouquet from my hands. Shocked, I held on tight. She managed to tear off a chunk, then hit me with it, screaming that she was next to get married. I didn't know it was that serious until I saw it was Morgan. Determined, I yanked it back, and in a moment of frustration yelled, You'll die alone! As I ran out of the venue. Story 11. I went to a friend of my wife's wedding, and from the get-go, I had a feeling it was going to be a memorable. The first clue was the bar setup for the reception. It was an outdoor wedding, so the couple had rented a tent. In one corner, they had set up the bar, complete with a sizable neon Bud Light sign. Now you wouldn't think much of this if the wedding was at a club or somewhere with a dedicated bar. But in a tent, it struck me as hilarious that someone decided a wedding needed a neon sign and went through the trouble of running an extension cord to power it. But I digress. As the reception got into full swing, I noticed this one guy who was clearly very intoxicated. He was trying to dance with every woman in sight. The whole scene had a bit of a redneck vibe, and I couldn't help but lean over to my wife and whisper, I bet you five dollars a fight breaks out. She hushed me and gave me a scowl, upset that I would make such a suggestion at what was supposed to be a joyous occasion. Not ten minutes later, the drunk guy must have hit on the wrong woman. The next thing I know, some other guy picks up a metal folding chair and slams it into the drunk, WWE style, knocking him into next Tuesday. The whole tent went silent for a moment before chaos erupted. I looked over at my wife, grinning, and said, called it. She just shook her head trying to hide her smile. The fight was quickly broken up, but it certainly left a mark on the evening. The drunk guy was escorted out, still stumbling and trying to regain his balance. The rest of the guests tried to return to the festivities, but the tension lingered in the air. Despite the drama, the night went on with everyone trying to make the best of it. The neon Bud Light sign flickered in the corner, a bright reminder of the unexpected entertainment that had unfolded. It wasn't the kind of wedding story you'd hear every day, but it was certainly one that would be remembered for years to come. Story 12 the wedding was going smoothly, with everyone enjoying the beautiful ceremony and the lovely reception. The bride had chosen her younger sister as her maid of honor, which was a sweet gesture, despite the sister being underage at the time. We were all curious to see what kind of speech she would give, considering she was so young. When it was time for the maid of honor to speak, she took the microphone with a mixture of nerves and excitement. The room fell silent, and everyone leaned in, eager to hear her words. She started with a simple, groom's name, 
is fine. There was a brief, awkward pause, and a few polite chuckles rippled through the crowd. Then she continued, I mainly liked him because he always buys me beer. And that was it. She handed the microphone back and sat down, looking pleased with herself. The room was filled with stunned silence for a few moments as people processed what she had just said. Some of the older guests looked around in confusion, while the younger ones burst out laughing. The bride and groom exchanged amused glances, clearly taken aback by the unexpected honesty of her speech. The bride's parents looked mortified, and you could see them whispering furiously to each other, probably wondering how they could have let this happen. The groom's family, on the other hand, seemed to find the whole thing hilarious. The groom himself was grinning and shaking his head, looking like he was trying to hold back laughter. Despite the awkwardness, the wedding carried on. The speech became the talk of the night, with guests repeatedly bringing it up in conversations, each time with more exaggerated detail. By the end of the evening, it had turned into one of those legendary moments that everyone would remember. Years later, when people reminisced about the wedding, the maid of honor's speech was always the highlight. It became part of the couple's lore, a funny story they'd share with new friends and future children. The bride's sister, now older and wiser, would occasionally get teased about it at family gatherings, but she took it in stride. Story 13 our wedding day was supposed to be perfect, but my mother-in-law had other plans. Right from the start, she made it clear she wasn't thrilled about the event. She pouted through the entire ceremony, looking like she'd rather be anywhere else. It was embarrassing, but we tried to focus on our special day. Things really kicked off at the rehearsal dinner. Our officiant, a close friend of ours, wasn't a priest, and my mother-in-law lost it over that. She screamed at him for not respecting our choice to have a non-religious ceremony. It was mortifying. My brother-in-law had to physically drag her out of the venue to calm her down. The whole scene was a nightmare, but we managed to push through. On the day of the wedding, her antics continued. She got hammered pretty early on and decided that the best way to express her displeasure was through fashion. She changed dresses four times. Each outfit was more elaborate and showy than the last making it seem like she was trying to steal the spotlight. Every time I turned around, there she was, in another attention-grabbing ensemble. It wasn't just the outfits. Her behavior was erratic. She'd alternate between sulking in a corner and being the loudest person in the room. She slurred her words as she talked, and her laughter was way too loud for the setting. It was like having a wrecking ball at a tea party. She even tried to make a speech at one point, but thankfully, someone cut the microphone before she could do much damage. Despite all this, my spouse and I tried to enjoy our day. We danced, we laughed with our friends, and we celebrated our love. But the undercurrent of tension was always there. Guests kept giving us sympathetic looks, and my family was visibly uncomfortable. It was clear that everyone was aware of the drama. When it was time for the reception dinner, my mother-in-law had her grand finale. She stumbled up to the head table, nearly knocking over a centerpiece, and declared that she needed to speak. My spouse and I exchanged worried glances. But before she could get a word out, my brother-in-law intervened again. He gently but firmly escorted her out of the tent, her protests echoing behind them. With her finally out of the picture, the atmosphere lightened. People started to relax, and the party picked up. We danced late into the night, trying to make up for the rocky start. By the end of it, we were exhausted but happy. Story 15 A friend of mine, who is Indian, comes from a family that runs several shops and gas stations. Yes, they are Patels. On the day of his wedding, his future mother-in-law caused quite a scene. She chewed him and his family out because he didn't work at one of his stores that morning. You know, like on his wedding day, he decided not to stand behind the counter for once. Her logic was, how will he be a good husband to my precious daughter if he can't even handle his business? This caused a huge commotion, a massive shitstorm, if you will, probably much more intense due to their cultural and familial custom. The wedding still proceeded, but the magic of the occasion was pretty much ruined. You could feel the tension in the air, like a cloud hanging over the festivities. As the ceremony went on, the joy that should have filled the day was overshadowed by the earlier confrontation. The bride looked beautiful, and the groom, my friend, tried to smile through it all. But you could see the strain on his face. His family, who had worked so hard to put this wedding together, were visibly upset, and whispers about the morning's events buzzed among the guests. With time... I lost touch with my friend. But the word on the street was that his wife and mother-in-law were making his life miserable, treating him more like a cash cow than a husband. It was sad to hear because he was such a hardworking, dedicated guy who deserved to be happy. This story really stayed with me. It was a stark reminder of how family dynamics and expectations can cast a long shadow over personal happiness. My friend's mother-in-law couldn't see beyond her immediate judgment to appreciate the bigger picture that her daughter was marrying a good man who was trying to balance business responsibilities with a once-in-a-lifetime personal milestone. 
I often wonder how things turned out for him. Did he find a way to balance the demands of his in-laws with his own happiness? Did his wife eventually stand by him against her mother's unreasonable expectations? It's hard to say, but I hope he found some peace and happiness in his life. Story 16. My great aunt threw a charcoal bomb at her new daughter-in-law during the first dance with her son. Yes, you read that right. A charcoal bomb. Let me give you some backstory to make sense of this bizarre incident. My cousin's mom, my great aunt, wasn't exactly the picture of mental stability. After her husband left her, she did everything she could to keep their son away from his dad. My cousin was just a kid back then, and she groomed him to hate his father. They had no relationship, and she hovered over him like a helicopter, controlling every aspect of his life. As he grew up, he eventually saw through her ways and cut all contact with her for years. About two years before the wedding, she reached out, and they tried to put the past behind them. They rebuilt their relationship, but she secretly hated his fiance. She never voiced her disapproval outright, but her mannerisms and sneaky, snide comments were clear indicators. The bride-to-be eventually confronted her, and my cousin threatened to cut his mom out of his life again if she couldn't accept his fiance. She apologized, and things seemed to be okay leading up to the wedding. On the day of the wedding, everyone was in high spirits. The ceremony went off without a hitch, and the reception was filled with smiles, laughter, and pictures. Then came the first dance. As my cousin and his new bride swayed on the dance floor, out of nowhere, my great aunt hurled a charcoal bomb at the bride. I'm not sure what it was compacted in, but suddenly, the pristine white dress was covered in pasty black stuff. The joyous atmosphere turned to chaos in an instant. People went from smiling and taking pictures to cursing, shouting, and gasping in shock. The bride was mortified, standing there with her dress ruined, tears welling up in her eyes. My cousin was livid, and his face was a mix of rage and disbelief. That was the last straw. His mom was once again cut out of his life, this time for good. She barely comes around for family functions anymore, and when she does, she's a ghost of her former self, overshadowed by the memory of that disastrous day. As a kid, witnessing all of this left a lasting impression on me. I can still vividly recall the bride's face, frozen in shock and horror, and the surreal turn the day took. It was like a scene out of a nightmare and it cemented my great-aunt's reputation as the possessive mother-in-law from hell. Story 17. I spent over a decade working in event planning, and let me tell you, I've seen my fair share of bizarre and chaotic situations, but two particular incidents stand out as the most memorable. The first involved a guest who decided that the best way to enjoy a wedding was to pick a fight with our security officer. It was a beautiful evening. Everything was set up perfectly, and the ceremony had just finished. Guests were mingling, and the atmosphere was lively. Suddenly, I heard a commotion near the entrance. One of the guests, clearly intoxicated, was arguing loudly with our security officer. Things escalated quickly, and before anyone could intervene, the guest took a swing at the officer, aiming a punch right at his face. Fortunately, our security team was well-trained and managed to restrain the guy without anyone getting hurt. He was escorted off the premises, but the drama left everyone a bit shaken. The second incident happened at a different wedding, and it was equally unforgettable though in a more surreal way. The bridal party decided that the best way to help the bride calm down before the ceremony was to snort Xanax. Yes, you read that right. They lined up in one of the bridal suite bathrooms and took turns snorting the anti-anxiety medication. I stumbled upon this scene when I went to check on the bride, who was noticeably jittery and anxious early. When I walked in, there they were, mid-snort. The bride herself looked dazed but significantly calmer. The ceremony proceeded without a hitch, but there was a strange, almost too relaxed vibe among the bridal party. They moved slowly, spoke in hushed tones, and seemed somewhat detached from the gravity of the event. Guests noticed, but didn't say much, probably attributing it to nerves or pre-wedding jitters. These experiences taught me a lot about the unpredictability of people and the lengths they'll go to deal with stress, or sometimes, just to cause trouble. Weddings are supposed to be joyous celebrations, but when you're in event planning, you learn to expect the unexpected. Whether it's dealing with a rowdy guest trying to start a fight or a bridal party, indulging in dubious methods to calm their nerves, every event brings its own unique set of challenges. Story 18. Family dynamics can be tricky, and my husband's wedding day was a prime example of just how complicated things can get. His grandmother and aunt had a long-standing feud over a family issue. They hadn't spoken in years, and the animosity was palpable. When it came time to invite guests to our wedding, each insisted they would only attend if the other did not. It turned into a game of cat and mouse, with both declaring their intentions not to come if the other was going. In the end, neither showed up. This hurt my husband deeply. Both his grandmother and aunt had played significant roles in his life, even after they stopped speaking to each other. He went out of his way to maintain relationships with both of them, calling, emailing, and spending time with each separately. On a day that was supposed to be filled with joy and celebration, 
their absence cast a shadow over everything. Despite the love and support from the rest of our family and friends, the empty seats where his grandmother and aunt should have been were glaring reminders of the rift. It was a wound that cut deep, and my husband couldn't hide his disappointment. He had hoped that, for one day, they could set aside their differences and come together to celebrate our union. Instead, their stubbornness left him feeling abandoned by two of the most important people in his life. Even five years later, they still don't understand why he was so upset. They continue to justify their decisions, unable to see beyond their own grievances. Whenever the topic of the wedding comes up, they brush it off, not realizing the emotional toll their absence took on him. They remain oblivious to the pain they caused, locked in their own perspectives. My husband has tried to explain his feelings to them, but it seems to fall on deaf ears. They nod, murmur apologies, but their actions speak louder than words. They simply can't grasp that their personal feud had such a profound impact on him. It's frustrating to watch him wrestle with this unresolved issue, knowing that the people he cares about most can't see past their own conflict. Despite this, we've moved forward. Our wedding day was still beautiful, filled with love, laughter, and cherished memories with those who did come. But the absence of his grandmother and aunt is a bittersweet reminder of how family conflicts can overshadow even the happiest of occasions. Story 19. The worst wedding I ever attended wasn't ruined by a guest, but by the bride herself. It was my ex's sister's wedding, and although she had to rush the planning to accommodate her husband's family, who could only attend that year from overseas, her behavior was inexcusable. The ceremony itself went smoothly, but the bride's attitude quickly soured everything afterwards. She was upset because her husband hadn't explicitly told her she looked beautiful, even though his face showed nothing but admiration. It was obvious to everyone but her. Things took a turn during the photo session. Her mom, trying to steady herself, lightly grabbed the bride's dress for balance. The bride snapped at her, saying, Don't touch the dress! Which left her mom visibly upset. It was an unnecessarily harsh reaction, especially in front of everyone. Then there was the issue with her close friend, who had come dressed casually because she had told him it was fine. She refused to take photos with him, claiming he wasn't dressed appropriately. It was a complete contradiction, and left her friend feeling humiliated. The real drama unfolded during the reception. She spent most of it texting her husband, telling him she wanted an annulment. Despite everyone's efforts to calm her down, she left early. The situation escalated into a full-blown yelling match with her mother. Harsh words were exchanged, and they declared each other dead to one another, leading to two years of silence between them. To cap off the night, the bartender at our wedding, who had seen everything from drunken brawls to people vomiting, mentioned that we were a great group because, unlike a previous wedding he had worked at, no one had pooped in the sink. Yes, someone had actually done that at another wedding he worked. It really put things into perspective. Even with all the drama, at least no one defiled the bathroom fixtures. Story 20. I wasn't at the wedding itself, but the rehearsal dinner was unforgettable for all the wrong reasons. The groom's father, a Christian pastor, decided to give a speech that managed to offend nearly everyone in attendance. It was like he had a checklist of controversial topics to hit, and he didn't miss a single one. First, he started with a light-hearted suggestion that the bride must learn to cook the groom's favorite foods for when he comes to visit. The bride's expression shifted from polite to strained as he elaborated on how important it was for a wife to cater to her husband's tastes, especially for his son. Then he moved on to the topic of the groom's ex-girlfriend, who ended up marrying the groom's older brother. The pastor found it necessary to remark on how odd it was. Even though the groom and his ex dated for about a week in eighth grade, the room filled with awkward laughter and uncomfortable glances. The pastor didn't stop there. He commented on how he hoped the future child the couple planned to adopt wasn't black or Chinese. You could feel the collective intake of breath from the guests. The bride and groom looked mortified, their faces a mix of anger and embarrassment. He continued by reiterating his belief that marriage is only between a man and a woman which felt like a direct slap to any same-sex couples present or anyone who supported LGBTQ plus rights. The tension in the room grew thicker with every word. Finally, he closed with a declaration that women need to submit to their husbands. This outdated and sexist statement drew gasps and murmurs of disapproval from several guests, especially the bride's friends and family. By the end of his speech, the atmosphere was completely ruined. What should have been a joyous occasion turned into a cringeworthy spectacle. The bride and groom tried to salvage the evening, but the damage was done. Conversations were stilted, and people avoided eye contact, trying to recover from the verbal bombshells dropped by the groom's father. The next day at the wedding, the tension from the rehearsal dinner still lingered. Guests were wary, unsure of what to expect next. Thankfully, the ceremony went off without further incident, but the pastor's speech had left a lasting impression. Story 21. This happened almost 10 years ago when I was still a teenager, 
so some details are a bit fuzzy, but it's one of those unforgettable family stories. My uncle, who is mixed race with mostly African-American heritage, was marrying his longtime girlfriend, a white woman from the Deep South. Her father is a pastor, and when they first got engaged, her parents were less than thrilled. They couldn't get past the idea of their future grandchildren being mixed, as if it were the worst thing in the world. Her mom eventually came around, charmed by my uncle's kindness and personality, and her dad seemed to follow suit, or so we thought. Fast forward to the wedding day, my aunt was three months pregnant. Her mom knew, most of my family knew, and a few close friends knew, but her dad was kept in the dark for obvious reasons. The wedding date had been moved up, and everyone was trying to keep the peace. But weddings have a way of bringing out secrets, and somehow, her dad found out the real reason for the rush. Thankfully, this happened before the ceremony started, while we were all still in the dressing rooms getting ready. Her dad stormed in, red-faced and fuming, and launched into a tirade. He was disappointed not only because she was having a mixed baby, but also because she had, in his words, let these blacks corrupt her to the point of having a baby out of wedlock. He went on about how her first husband divorced her because of blah blah blah, completely disregarding the happy occasion and reducing his daughter to tears. Everyone in the room was stunned. My mom, my aunt, the bridesmaids, and I just sat there with our mouths open. Then my mom, in all her New York-raised fury, went off on him. She was the only one who snapped out of the shock and stood up to his ignorant, rude rant. She backed him into a corner with her words, and we all had her back before things could get physical. My poor aunt was mortified, crying as her mom dragged her father out of the room to talk some sense into it. My other aunt, who is my uncle's rational sister, followed to help mediate. I don't know what was said after because my mom made me leave, but somehow they managed to reconcile enough for him to walk her down the aisle. I suspect it was more about saving face than any real change of heart. The ceremony went on as planned, and to the outside world, everything looked perfect. But those of us who witnessed the earlier drama knew better. It's a story that gets told at family gatherings, always with a mix of disbelief and laughter at how my mom handled the situation. 